Right, hi, good morning everyone. Uh, welcome back to another edition of Mr. West Reads. Today we'll be reading The Ice Monster by the great David Williams. Um, so do a quick recap first of that, as ever of um, what's just been happening in the book and then uh, we will get straight into it. So Elsie escaped from the um, orphanage, went and lived on the streets and then an explorer found the ice monster, which is a big woolly mammoth. And Elsie was hiding in the Natural History Museum at night to keep warm. And that's where the ice monster was taken. The woolly mammoth was taken. So um, Elsie went to see it. And then she met Dottie, who is the cleaning lady. And they went and um, they went exploring and wanted to see the ice monster. They got chased away by um, the head of security, Sir Lancaster, and then they went, ended up down in the cellar, and in the cellar they find, so found some lightning in a bottle, and um, they were playing with the lightning in the bottle, and then um, Dotty said, how can you catch lightning in a bottle? That's impossible. And um, a voice came from the shadows, which said, nothing is impossible, child. Oh, so who's that going to be? Right, chapter 19, Lightning in a Bottle. Down in the secret room, the two intruders froze in fear as a figure wheeled himself out of the darkness holding a lantern. The man was so elderly he had the appearance of a tortoise. He was completely bald and wore a pair of half-moon spectacles on the end of his nose. His clothes were dirty, were a dirty old laboratory coat worn over a tweed suit that was falling apart at the seams. He had gnarled slippers on his feet and fingerless gloves on his callous encrusted hands. It's you, cried Dotty. Everyone thought you were dead. No, lonely cleaning woman, I am very much alive. Who is he? said the girl. I am the professor he announced grandly. Professor of what? asked Elsie. Exactly, joked Dotty. Everyone at the museum knew him. He used to be one of the top men here until the... Yes, yes, the professor interrupted. We don't need to go into all that. What's all that? asked Elsie, intrigued. The professor nearly burned the whole museum down in one of his madcap experiments, said Dotty. The old man's face turned a furious shade of purple. That's not what happened, you stupid old woman. Well, then what did happen? Not quite as clever as you think, man. The girl couldn't help but smirk. Here were two grown-ups bickering like children. The professor wheeled himself about his secret laboratory, lighting the candles around the space one by one. Soon a room was revealed, the likes of which neither Elsie nor Dotty had seen before. There were glass tubes everywhere, chemicals in dusty old bottles and scientific equations scribbled in chalk on every inch of the walls. It was like being able to see inside the old man's brain. Brilliant, but bonkers. I was conducting a revolutionary experiment to harness the power of lightning, continued the professor, something I had been working on for many years. One stormy night, ten years ago, I launched a small metal-tipped balloon into the sky. Attached to the balloon was a length of copper wire. The wire led down to that bottle that now lies smashed on the ground. So what happened? asked Elsie, intrigued. I'll tell you what happened, interrupted Dotty. Do you mind if I tell my own story? Thank you very much, you ignorant, ignorant woman, asked the professor. I ain't got a clue what ignorant means scolded the woman, but it better not be something bad. My experiment was a complete success, continued the professor. I captured the lightning in a bottle. That is what gave you that little electric shock. Little? exclaimed Elsie. Anything bigger and it would have killed you, replied the professor. Sizzle to death in a heartbeat, Elsie gulped. So if the experiment was a complete success, why did you lose your job? she asked. Good question, murmured Dotty. Silence, ordered the professor. The copper wire became wrapped around one of the museum's towers. 
Another much stronger bolt of lightning hit the balloon and it set the tower on fire. Dotty jumped in. It's very lucky that it was raining cats and dogs that night or the fire would have burned the whole museum down to the ground. The professor fell silent for a moment, then bowed his head in sorrow. I was hauled in front of the museum director and told in no uncertain terms that I was to ever practice science again. I was thrown out, but the museum was my life. I had nowhere else to go, so I hid down in the cellar. It was so long ago now, all us upstairs thought you were dead. I might as well be, murmured the old man. Now I'm just rotting away in the dark, waiting for the end. My dream of becoming one of the world's most famous scientists is nothing but ashes. I have more chance of capturing lightning in a bottle. Elsie's face lit up. A thought had flashed across her mind. It was an idea so crazy, it was brilliant. And so brilliant, it was crazy. I think there's still a chance your name could go down in history. How? sputtered the old man. You could bring a prehistoric creature back to life. Chapter 20. Dark Fire. Not the saber-toothed tiger, exclaimed Dotty. No, laughed Elsie. That's just a skeleton. No, I suppose there's little help for that now. You don't mean the man moth, do you? The mammoth, yes. That's what I said, protested the lady. Man moth. You want to bring that man moth upstairs back to life? Yes. So we have a new arrival, do we? Asked the professor. I wondered what all that noise was. Bringing it back to life is madness, exclaimed Dotty. Um, good madness or bad madness, asked Elsie. Is there a good kind? Yeah. Listen, that creature has been perfectly preserved for 10,000 years. It looks like it snuffed it just yesterday, right? Dotty nodded her head. So surely, with the professor's lightning-catching thingamajig, we could give it a, a ginormous shot and restart its heart? Elsie and Dotty looked at the professor. He was the science expert, after all. Even though he had very nearly burned down the Natural History Museum, he was his old eyes, sorry, his old eyes lit up with a dark fire. He turned straight ahead as the plan began to take shape in his mind. This is a genius idea of mine, he whispered. Elsie looked mightily confused. Wasn't it her idea? I, I can use my lightning technology to create life. The dream of all sciences since the dawn of time to be God. I, I think it's gone to his head a bit, murmured Dotty. I will go down in history as the greatest scientist of my age. No, of all time. Isaac Newton, an apple fell on your head and you came up with the idea of gravity. Who cares? Nicholas Copernicus, you discovered that the Earth revolves around the sun rather than the other way around. Big deal. Charles Darwin, so you completely changed the way we think about life on Earth with your theory of evolution. Duh. They will rip up your books, burn your paintings and tear down your statues and pit up ones of me, me, me. Yes, it will all be about me. There was an uncomfortable si silence for a moment. Have you finished? asked Elsie. The professor paused for thought. Yes, you two will be my assistants. You must do everything I say and be prepared to lay down your lives in the name of science if need be. Now, come on. There's no time to lose. Instantly, the old man started busying, busying himself about his laboratory and handing pieces of scientific equipment to Elsie, who followed him around like an eager puppy. Dotty looked on in disbelief. Have you two completely lost your mind? She asked. The mind is an abstract construct, replied the professor. What he just said, agreed the girl not having understand, understood a word of it. If you do manage to catch a bolt of lightning and somehow bring this man moth, mammoth, corrected Elsie, man moth, that's what I said, back to life, what are you going to do with it? It was a good question and stopped both of them in their tracks. Hmm, pondered the girl. 
well, maybe the man, maybe the mammoth can come and live with you. Dotty went, Dotty. With me? I rent a tiny attic room in a boarding house. There's a no cats and dogs rule. Well, what about a no mammoths rule? Asked Elsie. No. Well, then, there ain't a no dinosaurs rule either. I ain't sure the landlady thought she'd need any rules about animals that have been extinct for millions of years. Well, if it can't come and live with you, maybe it can come and live with me, said Elsie. You don't have a home, Elsie. So maybe we can set it free. Elsie noticed the professor smiling to himself. He was hiding something. But what? We can work on the finer details in good time, he said. First, we have to bring it back to life. Now, where did I put that copper wire? Dotty grabbed whatever bit of scientific equipment Elsie was holding and put it down on the counter. Come on, Elsie, this is all going to end in tears, said the lady. With that, Dotty grabbed the girl's hand and dragged her over to the secret door. Please, Dotty, I beg you, cried the professor. I need your help too. No, please, no means no. Just the other side of the door, footsteps could be heard once again. Click, clack, click, clack. Click, clack. The pair fell silent. Shush, pushed Elsie. It's clout. He doesn't know I'm here, whispered the professor. Nobody does. If you've left him, if you've led him here, then shh, pushed the girl again. All three kept dead still as the boot steps came to a halt right outside the secret door. Click, clack, click. Then came the sound of a light tapping. Tap, tap, tap. Dotty held her chest. Her heart was racing. Tap, tap, tap. Elsie had had, had, had to hide herself countless times before. The trick was not to breathe. The girl stretched out her hand to silence the old lady. Dotty clasped her hands together and closed her eyes in prayer. Had Clout worked out there was something behind the secret door? Not yet. There was the sound of bootsteps again as Clout moved off. Click, clack, click, clack, click. If I know Mr. Clout, he'll be back again, whispered the professor. We have to move at lightning speed if we want to bring the monster back to life. Well, what could possibly go wrong? Muttered Dotty. Chapter 21 A Thousand Silk Handkerchiefs. In his seek laboratory, the professor expounded his madcap plan. We need to make a giant hot air balloon from silk handkerchiefs and fly it over the museum in a lightning storm. Elsie, you will need to steal the silk handkerchiefs. Have you ever stolen anything before? Once or twice, lied the girl. How many do you need? Mm, no more than a thousand. A thousand? Give or take. Where am I going to get a thousand silk handkerchiefs from? A thousand well-to-do ladies and gentlemen, of course. Now, we will also need a round piece of metal, continued the professor, like a soldier's tin helmet. Suddenly, Dotty jumped up and down, looking as if she desperately needed a wee. But in actual fact, she was just overexcited. Oh, 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 she cried, waving her hand in the air. Yes, asked the professor. I know where to get a tin helmet. My boyfriend, Titch, he'll have one from his old war days. Perfect. We will need to attach it to the top of the balloon. Let me show you. The professor reached into the pocket of his dirty laboratory coat. Now, where on earth is my chalk? Elsie looked a little sheepish. Oh, it must have slipped out of your pocket and into my hand, she lied. Very good, child. Very good. The professor was mightily impressed. Those fingers will come in handy when you're stealing the handkerchiefs. The old man held out his hand and she placed the stolen chalk into it. Then he began drawing his invention on the wall of the laboratory, giving commentary as he sketched. So here is the balloon with the tin helmet at the very top. The balloon will have a wicker basket attached by ropes at the bottom here. 
In the middle of the basket, we will place a metal drum. Inside that drum, wood will be burned. The hot air will cause the balloon to inflate and take to the skies. Oh, this is all getting very involved, muttered Dotty. Silence while the great professor speaks, he snapped. Then the pilot of the balloon will fly up into the heart of the storm. When lightning strikes here, he bashed his chalk against the drawing of the metal helmet. The lightning bolts will travel along this length of copper wire all the way down through the museum itself. The end of the wire we will have to em we will have embedded right into, but before he could finish, Elsie did it for him. The mammoth's heart. Exactly, exclaimed the professor. You're a fast learner, young lady. Dotty put her hand in the air. Yes, he asked grandly. Can I say something? No, he snapped. The lady crossed her arms in a sulk. So you, Elsie, will steal the thousand silk handkerchiefs, then you and Dotty will sew them together to make the balloon. The tin helmet this Titch character will provide, the basket, metal drum and firewood Elsie can scavenge from the street, streets, copper wire, and I have here from my uh, last experiment. It couldn't be simpler. Dotty and Elsie stood there open-mouthed in shock. Simple was not the word that sprang to mind. So who will be going up in the balloon? asked Elsie. The professor grinned a wicked grin. Not you, child. No, no. I need a little person to squeeze through all the nooks and crannies of the museum and thread that copper wire all the way down to the, from the roof and to the main hall. Are you going up in the balloon then, professor? asked the girl. Uh, no, my child. My infirmity would prevent me from undertaking such a deathly mission. So who is? The professor's dark eyes fixed on Dotty. Elsie followed his gaze. Why is everyone looking at me? Dotty asked. Because you, cleaning woman, will have the honour of taking the most dangerous, perhaps deadly, part of the musician, flying the hot air balloon straight into a lightning storm. Great stuff. Right, we're going to leave it there for today. So I hope you're enjoying that book. And um, so remember, if you need anything, you can email us, find the uh, email on our school website and we can get you any work packs or anything you need. And we'll be back here same time again tomorrow at 10 o'clock. OK, take care, guys. Bye.